Good Friday morning. Welcome to Lenten Reflection. Give glory to God, our light and our life. O come, let us worship the Lord. O Lord, let my soul rise to meet you as the day rises to meet the sun. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, as now and will be forever. Amen. Come, let us bow down and bend the knee and kneel before the Lord our Maker. I do not think that I shall fear you when I see you face to face, our Psalm Antiphon. Psalm 38, O Lord, do not rebuke me in your anger. Do not punish me in your wrath, for your arrows have already pierced me and your hand presses hard upon me. I have become like one who does not hear and from whose mouth comes no defense. For in you, Lord, I have fixed my hope. You will answer me, O Lord my God. O Lord, you will not forsake me. You will not be far from me, O my God. Make haste to help me, O God of my salvation. I do not think that I shall fear you when I see you face to face. This Sunday is Palm Sunday. The Gospel account we read is the story of Jesus and his followers making a boisterous entrance into Jerusalem. The question before all that day, the disciples, the crowd, the anxious religious leaders, pensive, Roman authorities was simply this. What kind of king will Jesus be after he enters Jerusalem? Luke chapter 19. I begin reading with verse 29. When Jesus had come near Bethpage and Bethany, at the place called the Mount of Olives, he sent two of the disciples, saying, Go into the village ahead of you, and as you enter it, you will find tied there a colt that has never been ridden. Untie it and bring it here. If anyone asks you why you are untying it, just say this, The Lord needs it. So those who were sent departed and found it as he had told them. As they were untying the colt, its owners asked them, Why are you untying the colt? They said, The Lord needs it. Then they brought the colt to Jesus, and after throwing their clothes on the colt, they set Jesus on it. As he rode along, people kept spreading their cloaks on the road. As he was now approaching the path down from the Mount of Olives, the whole multitude of the disciples began to praise God joyfully with a loud voice for all the deeds of power that he had seen, saying, Blessed is the King who comes in the name of the Lord. Peace in heaven and glory in the highest heaven. Some of the Pharisees in the crowd said to him, Teacher, order your disciples to stop. Jesus answered, I tell you, if these were silent, even the stones would shout out. During our musical interlude, I would like you to reflect upon that question, what kind of king is Jesus? What kind of qualities 
does he show toward us, towards the world, as Lord? And then consider, what does that mean for your life, in our life together? Society, triumphant processions usually follow the often violent military successes of generals. The King Jesus, depicted in a parable immediately preceding this passage, also dealt violently with his enemies. Immediately following the parable, Luke tells the story that I just read for you of Jesus entering Jerusalem. Therefore, Luke himself is raising that question. Is Jesus' victory march likened to military leaders? Is his entrance into, into Jerusalem an affront to Roman authority? During the next seven days, I strongly encourage you to read the Passion account according to Luke. Start with Luke 22 and then read through the end of chapter 23, saving chapter 24 to Saturday evening, the vigil of Easter. And as you read a segment each day, ask yourself a question. What kind of Jesus appears in Jerusalem? How does Jesus show power? And then ponder the more challenging question. What kind of Jesus am I, are we, called to proclaim in a world already bitterly divided over so many things? Are we pursuing power of human authority? Is, is that our desire? Is that our aim? And then finding some Bible passages to give it justification? Or might we follow Jesus who came in the power of Elijah? That is, Jesus came to turn the hearts of parents to children and the hearts of the disobedient to the wisdom of righteousness. We could even say the wisdom of right relationships. And to make ready, to prepare a people to receive the Lord. All around us are signs of brokenness. And maybe that brokenness is even as close as your family or your household. During Passion Week, these coming seven days, is the Jesus portrayed in this narrative, the Jesus that will meet us in our brokenness. And as you watch Jesus weep over the brokenness that was Jerusalem, Take the role of a servant, 
tell stories of the coming kingdom, yield his life to the powers of sin, death, and the devil, only to defeat the same when God raised him from the dead, may you realize the power and hope of amazing grace for yourself and discover the good news, the message of hope we are to bring to our neighbors, those living around us in the Lidditz community and beyond, and neighbors in distant lands. Good and gracious God, so many people are seeking power in business, on the schoolyard, politically. And in their seeking of power, they're seeking that as their heart's desire. And what gets lost is your love for all people. What gets lost is what is the right thing to do with this time in compassion and mercy and well-being for all people. Forgive us, Lord. Help us, help me to seek the power of Jesus who took the role of servant to heal those who are broken, to lift them up, and to pay the debt of our sin, only to defeat the power of sin, of death, of the devil, when you, Lord God, raised him from the dead. Over these coming seven days, help us to ponder this good news and to take hold of the truth for our life. For Jesus' sake, amen. I hope to see you on Palm Sunday morning, but if not, please join us on YouTube for the worship service. Be blessed.